welcome to the British Rallycross Championship with 600 horsepower, four wheel drive and jaw dropping acceleration of 0-60 in under two seconds. Rallycross supercars produce some of the most intense action in motorsport as they battle it out around part gravel, part tarmac circuits. Hello and welcome to the 2016 British Rallycross Championship in association with Odyssey Battery. I'm Alan Hyde and we're at Croft Circuit in the northeast of England for what promises to be a fascinating and exciting opening round of the season. The main category, the supercar category, has attracted a bumper entry of 16 cars this year and a stronger field than we've had for many a season. Leading the way is five-time British champion Julian Godfrey, who embarks on his sixth season, targeting his sixth straight title. I always try and get good finishes every round, just keep my head keep it clean and try and get the rest points. Multiple British Rallycross champion Pat Duran returns in a Citroen C4. 20 cars here, supercars, all these youngsters, yeah, and just a few flickerings and old fools like me. Former British champion Ollie O'Donovan will drive a Ford Focus at Croft before switching to a Fiesta later in the year. I'm really looking forward to a good battle and hopefully everybody enjoys the race. 2015 MSA Super National champion Dan Rook will graduate to the top class in a World Rallycross Championship specification Citroen DS3. It was only my first year of Rallycross last year but things have moved fast and I'm looking forward to the season this year. Another rising star is Jack Thorne. He won the British Super 1600 Championship in 2014 and will pilot a Ford Fiesta this season. It's great to still be racing with Dan. Um, he's a local lad, live near each other, both from Devon. Uh, putting Devon on the map, all right? Also moving up is multiple rallycross champion Dave Bellaby, who will drive a Ford Fiesta. Former RX 150 driver James Grint will move from the European Championship to the British Series for 2016. British Touring Car Championship team Power Max Racing joins British Rallycross for 2016 with race winner Dave Newsham at the wheel of a Fiesta. Fellow Fiesta driver Kevin Proctor will be hoping to pick up where he left off at the end of 2015 with victory at his home circuit. Steve Harris will race a Citroen DS3, Mark Flaherty will campaign a Ford Focus as will Andy Grant. Colin Anson will drive a Ford KA and Simon Horton will return with his Subaru Impreza. So that's a look at our supercar drivers, but what exactly is a supercar? We asked Ollie O'Donovan if he'd give us a guided tour of his Ford Focus. Yeah, it's a, it's a Ford Focus, though it's not the current model on the body shell. Um, it's very current on its running gear. Uh, we're running a COSI YB engine, and we're using a, a sequential gearbox with four wheel drive mechanism. So. It's a Ford Focus, genuine bit of Ford is a basic shell and uh, built up in all strengthening, roll caged, fairly hefty brakes and suspensions. Everything else that would be in the normal car stripped out at the first cooling? Absolutely, we just start off with a bare metal shell and uh, we've modified that quite extensively. It's strengthened in a lot of places and we widened the tunnel for the gearbox and also we widened the wheelbase to give the car for the bigger wheels and the bigger brakes. I'm joined by series commentator David Addison. Of course, David, beautiful backdrop, isn't it? Um, uh, the Rallycross circuit here at Croft and all four seasons in one day. You've got in the paddock this real sense of excitement and anticipation. And it's, it's not just hype, but I think everybody feels that British Rallycross is on the verge of something big once again. You've got this fantastic entry of supercars. Uh, we've had one or two with dramas across practice, for example. We lost one on the eve of the event. Mad Mark Watson Citroen had a problem. But the cars are there, and, and because there are more of them competing abroad, gradually they're starting to permeate down into domestic championships. And they're now more affordable for, for British teams and drivers to run and to actually get their hands on the hardware in the first place. So it's not just hype, I think genuinely we are on the verge of a great season, primarily because of that supercar entry. 
but everybody involved in the championship, I think, especially on a sunny day like this, is, is all excited about a new season. And Rallycross gives great racing anyway, whether it's a two-litre turbo four-wheel drive supercar or a front-wheel drive small engine hot hatch. You know, the nature of the track and the fact that you've got different surfaces and short, sharp races, it just lends itself to good racing. Croft is the first of eight rounds in the championship. The series will visit Pembrey in Wales, Lydon Hill in Kent, Mass Mechelen in Belgium, before concluding back here at Croft in October on the same weekend as the British Rallycross Grand Prix. As well as in-depth coverage of the headline supercar category, we'll be bringing you action from the eight other classes that make up the British Rallycross Championship bill. That's all to come later in the year, but now we're ready for heat one of supercars. Let's join our commentator, David Addison. A whole new season of the MSA British Rally Cross Championship in association with Odyssey Battery starts right here and it's a man new to the discipline really. Dave Newsham on pole position, James Grint with him on the front of the grid and so too is former British champion Pat Duran ahead of Dave Bellamy, another former champion Ollie O'Donovan, then Kevin Proctor, Dan Rook and Mark Flaherty round out the grid as they blast away from the line. The run down to Clairvaux Corner for the first time. Dave Newsham has bogged down. James Grint's made a good start. So is Ollie O'Donovan in the middle. Pat Duran is on the outside and it's Grint who leads the way. Duran goes wide. O'Donovan muscles his way up the inside in the focus. And the Albertech racing Peugeot of James Grint gets forced out wide. Duran tries to get up on the inside as well. And there's contact. Duran gets sideways. Grint is delayed. And O'Donovan has now got a big lead as they work their way onto the loose for the first time. Ollie O'Donovan leads the way, and Pat Duran in real strife. There's the replay from on board with Dave Bellamy. Grint and Duran get together, and Duran finds himself way, way down the order now. Out of the hairpin for the first time. The race leader is Ollie O'Donovan, and he's getting away a little bit from the opposition. Now there's a new format to the MSA British Rallycross Championship this year. Forget about C finals, qualifying for the B, qualifying for the A, the old traditional way of doing it. Instead, you still get your three heats, but then there are two semi-finals, eight drivers in each, and it's the top four from each of the semi-finals that go into the final. It means more racing for the competitors, more action for the fans. You still get points scored across the heats. So, for example, if you are fastest in a round of heats, you get one point, second fastest two, and so on. And the fewer number of points means the higher up the grid you are for the next round of the competition. There's that to factor in, but also it's all action out on track. And at the moment, Ollie O'Donovan is using his many years of experience to lead the way. Behind him is James Grint as they work their way across the loose once more. Now, what can Grint do about O'Donovan? James is a relative newcomer to Rallycross. He's done some stage rallying. He came through the RX150 buggies. He's had a spell in the European Championship, but now concentrating his efforts for this year on the British Championship. And a replay here of Dave Newsham going off the road. The car completely steamed up and with just no visibility at all, the former Legends champion and Clio champion and British Touring Car race winner has slithered off the road towards the Armco. Dave Newsham is out, very much in is Ollie O'Donovan. He's heading for a victory. Now, there's been a lot of overnight rain. You can see the track is still slippery, but it's getting drier and drier all the time. So the road is gonna get quicker as the day wears on. This, the first half of the supercar field, you can anticipate the second race in this first round of heats to be even quicker. Grint, though, has not given up, has he? Sideways at Clairvaux. Ollie O'Donovan in the Ford Focus. Fiesta due online later in the year. He leads the way. And then behind them in third is the impressive rookie, Dan Rook. They work their way out of Hawthorne through that elongated chicane and then onto the loose once more. Croft has been a real stalwart circuit for Rallycross over the years. Indeed, when full circuit racing wasn't happening at Croft, it was Rallycross that kept the place alive. He's got a great local following from fans and competitors, but it looks like Ollie O'Donovan is going to be the man to beat in this first race for the supercars of 2016. He comes up towards the line, the chequered flags will wave, double OD, Ollie O'Donovan takes the heat win, second across the line is James Grint, and then coming home for third, in fact, it's Kevin Proctor, who's chasing them through, although He's lost a bit of time out on track, and so Kevin Proctor, a distant third in the end, ahead of Dan Rook, and it's going to be Dave Bellaby who will come through next in the queue. But Ollie O'Donovan it is who takes an impressive victory, and there's still drivers in strife getting their way up towards the line, look, as marker tyres go flying right at the very end. 
an all-action way to start the MSA British Rallycross Championship season for the supercars. Confirmation that Ollie O'Donovan it is who leads them across the line. James Grint bags second, Kevin Proctor third, fourth is Dan Rook ahead of Dave Bellaby. Ollie heat number one complete, not a bad way to start the day or the season. No, it was a nice way to open the season, win the first race, can't complain about that, it was very good. How was the car feeling? The car felt very good, um, we were lucky we started the second order grid, it was a bit tight in the first corner and then uh, we made a breakaway and it became easy after that. The man on pole position for the second race in the first round of heats was Julian Godfrey and the five times champion was going to be very much the man to beat. It was a smaller grid, the likes of Steve Hill missing, Andy Grant missing, they both had mechanical problems in practice and Mad Mark Watson also sadly a non-starter at Croft, the car just not ready in time after some frantic last minute work. So Godfrey it was who blasted away from the line to lead down towards Clairvaux Corner, pursued by Jack Thorne, the 2014 Super National Champion, another man for this year stepping up to supercars and looking very impressive indeed. Steve Harris ran third but as Thorne did everything he could to stay in touch with Godfrey it was the renowned engine builder who was pulling away up front. Godfrey a man who started his career in motocross before coming into super national rallycross and winning championships and then dominating supercars was the man in charge as they headed down towards the hairpin. The Oldsburg MSE built Fiesta, the ex-Chris Brugger World Rallycross Championship car of Jack Thorne ran second and a great little battle raged on behind as Colin Anson's Ford car defended resolutely from Simon Horton's Subaru. But there was no stopping Godfrey and the real aim for him on the now drier circuit was to try to do a heat winning time quicker than that of Ollie O'Donovan in the first race and he achieved that with some ease. He had a monster margin at the end of the race and it was Godfrey who was faster than anybody in the first round of heats. Through for second place on track, Jack Thorne and Steve Harris, despite losing time at the final hairpin, came through to secure third. Behind, the battle for fourth ultimately went the way of Simon Horton. The Subaru outdragged Colin Anson's Ford car, but no arguing. Julian Godfrey continuing his great run of form from last season by being fastest in heat one. Simon Horton was the man on pole position for the first race in the second round of heats. Colin Anson with him at the front of the grid. Pat Duran, a non-starter with gearbox problems. Mark Flaherty was on row two, but Dave Newsham was missing. Prop shaft dramas for him. Steve Hill again sadly missed out. Transmission issues on the Mitsubishi. But Andy Grant was last on the grid and first by the first corner. His practice problems in the Ford Focus now well and truly put behind him. The Focus, a venerable car of the Devonian garage owner, the ex-Andrew Jordan Focus from a few seasons back, but Andy Grant, a hugely experienced driver, and it was Grant who hit the front as they rounded Hawthorns for the first time. Simon Horton in the Subaru chasing after him as the cars worked their way across the loose. In 2015, Grant had been plagued by an electrical sensor issue. That, thankfully, put behind him. The pace of the car was looking better and better, and he was on target for a heat win. Where the time would put him relative to everybody else in the second round depended on what happened in a very strong second race. But the first aim was to get to the front and keep out of trouble. And he nearly came unstuck at the very last corner. He pendulumed his way round the hairpin, slithered off onto the grass on the inside. But Grant found his way back on track and headed up towards the chequered flag. The race was his, but it could oh so easily have got away from him. Simon Horton took second, Colin Anson third, and a troubled Mark Flaherty in fourth. So confirmation of a heat win for Andy Grant ahead of Simon Horton, then Colin Anson and Mark Flaherty. But Grant's time was set to be beaten in the next race in round two of the supercar heats. It had Julian Godfrey on pole position with Jack Thorne on the front row. Ollie O'Donovan missing with transmission problems. James Grint and Kevin Proctor on row two. Steve Harris, Dan Rook and Dave Bellaby on the third row of the grid. When the lights went out, Thorne went nowhere and that enabled Julian Godfrey to storm into a race lead pursued by Kevin Proctor. Thorne tried to work his way back into contention. He pushed and pushed and managed to get himself back onto the train of cars. But up front, it was Julian Godfrey, the race leader, looking good with Kevin Proctor struggling to find a way by. Dave Bellaby had a novel line at the hairpin on the opening lap, slithered out wide, but was just able to stay ahead of Steve Harris as the cars blasted their way over the timing beam. But then, on the penultimate lap, a tyre stack was knocked into the middle of the road at the chicane. Godfrey was the first to find it, he swerved one way, Proctor went the other, Godfrey was delayed and it was Proctor who took a heat win. 
as unfortunately Jack Thorne's race came to a premature end with throttle cable problems. So Kevin Proctor, fastest in the second round of heats, ahead of Julian Godfrey. Dan Rook, third across the line in that race, ahead of James Grint, then Dave Bellaby. Eve Hogo, the marshals. They may need that extra warm clothing because the weather all of a sudden looks as if it's about to change. This third round of heats has all the makings of being even better than what we've seen before. This first race has Mark Flaherty, Dave Bellaby and Steve Harris at the front. Jack Thorne with drive shaft and throttle cable problems resolved is on road two. Ollie O'Donovan rear diff dramas resolved alongside. Then it's Dave Newsham at the back as we blast off and a great start by Bellaby. From the middle of the front row, Dave Bellaby storms away down towards Clairvaux, but Steve Harris on the outside line is going with him. Side by side into the first corner, Bellaby hits the curb and goes wide. O'Donovan gets sideways third behind them and Jack Thorne is fourth as they wriggle their way up through Clairvaux for the first time and then towards Hawthorne. Dave Newsham then at the rear of the pack looking to try to gain ground in the Power Max racing car but up front it is Dave Bellaby stepping up to supercars for this year. He's been successful in just about every other class in Rallycross over his long and illustrious career and now he's aiming to prove that he's top dog in one of these cars as well. He leads as they head to the hairpin for the first time. Ollie O'Donovan chases after him second. Steve Harris is third and then Jack Thorne, remember, super national champion two years ago. He is fourth and Thorne looking to try to make some progress here and he needs a good result out of this because he didn't finish his second race. Combination of a drive shaft and throttle cable problem putting him on the sidelines right at the end. Thorne in the blue and white car then chasing on in pursuit. He's in fourth place and it's Steve Harris just up the road ahead of him. Onto the loose they come once again but up front it is Dave Bellamy in the Fiesta who leads the way. Ollie O'Donovan chasing after him. And O'Donovan's focus ahead of the LD Motorsport Citroen in the hands of Steve Harris, second and third. Dave Newsham slithered off the road in heat one, didn't get to the grid to start heat two. He needs a good result out of heat three and Newsham there at the hairpin. Car looking a bit battle scarred at the back and this is a discipline very different indeed from the British Touring Car Championship in which Dave has been a race winner. The fight for third is well and truly joined though. Steve Harris ahead of Jack Thorne who goes way wide at Clairvaux, misses the floppy marker. And Thorne is throwing everything at this. Out of Hawthorne they come. He's absolutely on the edge. The car leaning on its suspension. There's a big, big moment in the offing there. He just about corrects it. But the car looking very, very committed as it came through Hawthorne. He just about got it all back under control. Jack Thorne is being spectacular, no argument. But the trouble is he's not making progress. He's still stuck in fourth place. Dave Bellamy looking as though the heat win is going to go his way. Bits of bodywork lie in the middle of the road. Bellamy powers his way through. O'Donovan chasing after him. These two clear of Steve Harris now. What can Ollie O'Donovan do about Dave Bellamy? Fiesta leads focus. Citroen is third in the hands of Steve Harris as the cars turn their way now. Up through Hawthorne once again. Dave Bellamy, another local man, leads the way and he accelerates now once more onto the loose section of the circuit and Jack Thorne has stopped in the background look. Just on the approach to Hawthorne, Jack Thorne has come to a standstill and that is very bad news indeed because it's going to put him potentially towards the back of the grid of the semi-finals assuming he even gets that far. The Fiesta is stationary but Dave Bellaby is on target to score a race win. The chequered flag waves and it is Dave Bellaby who comes across the line victorious. Ollie O'Donovan chases him home in second spot and Steve Harris is third. Very impressive drive that by Bellaby. Remember he's new to supercars this year but all his years of rallycross experience are being put to good use. The Fiesta comes home ahead of everybody else and Dave Bellaby looking good now for a very decent grid position for the semi-finals and they're going to be coming up shortly. So the marshals sprint off to attend to bits of bodywork in the road and also now to retrieve again Jack Thorne's stationary car parked over at Hawthorne. Dave Bellamy, the race winner. Ollie O'Donovan, the man who chases him home. Steve Harris takes third in the Citroen. And Dave Newsham fourth this time, ahead of Mark Flaherty. Jack Thorne, sadly a retirement. Steve Hill, sadly, a non-starter. Poor old Jack, not quite hitting the road as he would have wished at the end of that heat. Let's get back up to David. The final heat of the day is coming up here at Croft. 
This is race two in the third round of heats for the supercars. Kevin Proctor, Julian Godfrey and Dan Rook on the front row. James Grint and Andy Grant on the second. Simon Horton and Colin Anson on row three. Two old pros and a rookie on row one as the lights blink green. We're racing. Good start by Godfrey, good start by Proctor from pole, and on the outside is Dan Rook, but it's going to be Julian Godfrey, I think, from the middle, who's just got his nose in front as they turn into Clairvaux. He hits the curb, wide through the gravel goes Dan Rook, it's cost him the lead, it's cost him second. Rook falls to third as they work their way now up towards Hawthorne for the first time. They're heading for the loose, and Julian Godfrey leads the way. That tar stack, he's just navigated his way round, was the one that bounced into the middle of the road with a bit of help in the second round of heat. No such dramas for him to have to avoid it. This time, he leads the way. Kevin Proctor right on his tail, and Dan Rook is third. Dan Rook stepping up to supercars for this year. Kevin Proctor, a man that won the French round of the European Championship going back a few seasons, having gone through the C final and the B and then into the A to win it that way. And Kevin Proctor, massively experienced driver, going after another stalwart of the MSA British Rallycross Championship. And that is Julian Godfrey. And look at the different lines they take. Proctor much, much quicker through the first couple of corners, but it's not easy to overtake around the Croft Rallycross circuit. So even though Proctor gets right onto the tail of Godfrey, he can't yet find a way by. On the loose they come, and look at Dan Rook in third place. He may not be looking for a way round them as yet, but he's not falling back. Dan Rook, newcomer to supercars, the super national champion of 2015, is right there in the mix as well. Godfrey leads the way as they bounce their way once more across the loose, over the timing line now. Proctor runs second, Dan Rook is third, and then what's going on behind them for fourth place? There's another little scrap developing there as again Proctor absolutely on the limit through Clairvaux, uses all of the road, drifts the car through, keeping up the power all the time. He's sideways at Hawthorne. Dan Rook drops back by a length, but Julian Godfrey withstanding the pressure. He needs to score a win in this race, in this round of heat, because remember, he got mugged on the last lap of his second race when he had to swerve around a tyre stack and Proctor got the lead. And Kev the Rev has not given up yet as they head down towards the hairpin. The local man, coach, company director, he's got lots of business interests local to Croft, the man from North Allerton. He's right there on the back of the man from Sussex, Julian Godfrey, who's had one of the longer journeys to get to Croft, but he leads this race as they come over the line. It's still Proctor second. Fiesta ahead of focus then. And Kevin Proctor is sideways once more as he comes through Clairvaux, trying to get the run on the way up towards Hawthorne. Proctor in this ex NASA Al Atia M Sport built Ford Fiesta World Rally car. He's not doing a full season. He clips the tyres coming through the chicane. It's a shame we're not going to see Proctor in every round because he is one of the benchmark drivers. But here, Julian Godfrey is really feeling the pressure and he's probably quite relieved that Proctor won't do a full year. Down to the hairpin they come then. Heading up towards the timing line, it looks as though Julian Godfrey is going to be on to score the heat win. He comes across the line, checkered flags wave. Julian Godfrey it is who fends off the challenge of Kevin Proctor. Dan Rook's third place right on the coattails of the leaders illustrates though that he's a real force to be reckoned with. And James Grint has another impressive outing in the Albertech racing at Peugeot because he comes through in fourth place. So Julian Godfrey it is who takes the race win as Colin Anson makes his way up towards the line chasing after Simon Horton. And Andy Grant look having problems right at the very end. He didn't get to the end. It looks like a puncture. It looks like damage at the back of the car as well. Andy Grant's torrid day here at Croft continues. But Julian Godfrey wins the race. Kevin Proctor chases him home. The two virtually as one as they cross the timing line. Just half a second between them. Dan Rook takes third ahead of the Peugeot 208 of James Grint. No tyres in the middle of the track to avoid this time, Julian. All according to plan. Yeah, it all went to plan that time. Got a good start and uh, led it from the first corner. Um, it was very tight between me and Dan. Dan's on the outside there and he, he pushed me all the way down to the first corner and uh, I was on the inside. so. I let him run on the outside, kept it tight, and uh, then uh, just kept pressing on as much as I could. I see Kevin on my mirrors all the time, and uh, but just kept in front the whole time. But this game track in a bit more grip there now, not quite so slippery on the gravel. That's the action from the heats for the supercars here at Croft. We'll be back with the semi finals.
So the heats are complete. We move now into the semi-finals. Less points is more, and no surprise to see Julian Godfrey at the top of the uh, leaderboard with just four points accumulated from three heats during the day. Kevin Proctor in second place, the rookie Dan Rook in third, James Grint, Dave Bellaby and Steve Harris complete the top six. And it started to snow at Croft. Semi-finals time. The first semi-final in this new format for this year in British Rallycross. Julian Godfrey on pole position. Dan Rook with him at the front of the grid along with Dave Bellaby. Simon Horton and Mark Flaherty row two. Jack Thorne and Dave Newsham row three. Lights out, we're racing, they blast away. And a great start he's made by Julian Godfrey, but Dan Rook goes with him on the way down towards Clairvaux Corner for the first time. Godfrey on the outside rides the curb through the gravel, back onto the track. He's ahead of Rook and Bellaby is third as they work their way now through Hawthorne. There is Mark Flaherty at the back of the pack. Eight drivers qualify for each semi-final. It's the top four that go through. Rook with the right-hand door flapping open as he hits the loose run second. Godfrey leads the way and Jack Thorne is off in the background look. Jack Thorne's miserable day of problems continues and he's parked by the side of the road. Thorne, by the look of it, ain't going to qualify. He might creep in as a reserve if other people have dramas, but it looks like Jack Thorne's day is done. Meantime, at the end of lap one, it's Julian Godfrey leading and pulling away from Dan Rook. Top four go through. That's one target, but also, if you are a semi-final winner, you need to try and win it in the quickest possible time. The quicker of the two semi-final winners will take pole position for the final. Julian Godfrey is on a mission to start on pole for the last race of the day. He's being pursued by Dan Rook as they come across the loose once again. Julian Godfrey then, five times a champion in the Fiesta. He's up front and Dan Rook in his first year in a supercar runs second. Dan Rook comes very highly regarded. The chassis that he's got is the ex-Andreas Baccarud car. It's an LD Motorsports run, Citroen DS3. And Dan Rook then hustling on in his pursuit of the leader, Julian Godfrey. Dave Bellaby still running in third. Now, what about fourth? Simon Horton there has got Dave Newsham behind him. And that battle you're looking at now is for the last qualified place for the final. Horton up onto two wheels. Newsham demolishes the floppy markers as he chases after him. And Newsham tries to get up the inside of Hawthorne. Two wheels on the grass and he's done it. Great move. Dave Newsham goes fourth. Welcome to Rallycross then, Dave Newsham. All those lessons learnt in Legends and Clios and Touring Cars being put to good use. He's got himself up into fourth place and with it, potentially now, he's going to qualify for the final. He's got to keep his nose clean for another lap or two, but Dave Newsham then is now up into fourth. And if he can get into the final on his first attempt in a supercar in British Rallycross, that'll be quite a good effort, I reckon. Julian Godfrey continues to lead the way from Dan Rook, but here is Newsham now. His next target is Dave Bellaby up the road. I think that gap is just too great, really, to enable Dave Newsham a chance, a realistic chance of getting third spot. But how about this for the race leaders? The gap has come down a fraction. Dan Rook has not given up, has he, as they bounce their way across the loose section of circuit once again. There is Bellaby's Fiesta ahead of Dave Newsham, who is charging on behind him. Dave Newsham for Powermax Racing in the ex Marcin Vicic Polish car. He comes through the hairpin where it goes from loose to hard standing and back to loose. Over the bumps comes Dave Bellaby. It's been a very busy day of rally cross here, so inevitably the infield, the loose section, has cut up just a little bit. But it's much drier than it was at the start of the day. It's much quicker. And although at the start there were puddles, now there's lots of dust for the drivers to contend with. There is Dave Newsham still charging on in fourth place adapting to 600 horsepower but the two race leaders much much closer as they come down towards the hairpin once more it looks as though julian godfrey is going to be the first semi-final winner dan rook's going to chase him across the line we need to see a race time though out of julian godfrey and then compare that with what happens in the second semi-final when we get there over the topping line they cut. Julian Godfrey leads the way. Dan Rook chases after him in second. He just cannot quite get close enough. And still that flapping door is a bit of a distraction for him. Rook runs second. But the fact that he's so close to Godfrey, chasing a man with years of supercar experience, is massively impressive indeed. Rook is not phased. And as Godfrey gets sideways, here comes Dan Rook on the last opportunity to have a go for the race lead. Up round the outside. Can't really do it but he's not given up and he's fighting right the way to the last corner. 
down they come through the hairpin. Now the run up towards the checkered flag. Julian Godfrey in the end does secure the victory. Dan Rook will come through for second place. But what a race, and Julian Godfrey had to work very hard indeed for that. Dan Rook takes second, and the two of them well clear of anybody else for third place. Third is going to be Dave Bellaby. And what about fourth? Because Dave Newsham has been reeled in again by Simon Horton. Has Newsham got a problem? Look, then nose to tail, and Simon Horton just can't quite find a way by. There you've got Mark Flaherty, and Jack Thorne, having been off at the start, has recovered. He gets to the line. Well, Dave Newsham does just qualify ahead of Simon Horton. Mark Flaherty fends off Jack Thorne. Action right the way to the chequered flag. British Rallycross 2016 is looking better than it has for a long, long time. The sport is in good health and the action is coming thick and fast. Semi-final one, won by Julian Godfrey from Dan Rook, Dave Bellaby and Dave Newsham, the last qualifier. The rookie Rook kept you honest, didn't he? He did, yeah, he was there all the time. He, um, he didn't back off at all and uh, I was pressing pretty hard, just for keeping it uh, clean so I didn't make any mistakes because I should keep him behind me and uh, should be on pole for the final. We asked you earlier on about what was your secret. One, one of your secrets is, uh, is an open secret. You are very, very neat and tidy, inch perfect to every corner. Yeah, no, I try to be that and not lose time. Like, going and throwing into sideways is, is good fun to do and good for the crowd, but it's not good for the time. No. So, uh, not good I, for the tyres either, then. That's right, for the tyres all the time. No. So it's uh, take it nice and tidy, less strain on the car, and it's normally a faster lap time. We're ready for the second semi-final here at Croft. Kevin Proctor, James Grint, Steve Harris, the front row. Ollie O'Donovan, Colin Anson on row two. Andy Grant would have been on row three, but his problems in the last round of heats keep him out of the semi-finals. Grid formed, we're racing! Steve Harris has a problem and goes nowhere, but James Grint gets an absolute rocket ship start. Grint away like a stabbed rat on the way down towards Clairvaux, but up the inside comes Kevin Proctor. Proctor hits the curb and then he hits Grint, who gets all sideways. Proctor grabs the advantage and now Grint has got to fend off O'Donovan. Ollie O'Donovan runs third, tries to get up the inside. He tries to go second then as they work their way towards the loose. But the Albertech Racing Peugeot 208 in the hands of James Grint took a real whack going through Clairvaux. I just wonder whether that's going to do any lasting damage to it. Here comes O'Donovan, two wheels on the grass on the inside, and there's more contact against Grint. The guy's a magnet. Everybody's had a go at him thus far, and it means he's wide going through the hairpin. Ollie O'Donovan tries to sprint up alongside. They lean on each other, and Grint gives as good as he gets. Look, because he gets into the side of O'Donovan. But James Grint's car not only is crabbing, so it certainly did take a big whack from Proctor, but it's also looking very dog-eared as well. And that car now is not going to be 100%, is it, in the way that it handles and the way that it's set up for the circuit. So James Grint's got a real fight on his hands now with a battered and evil handling car that's always been a bit tail-happy. And the back almost comes round on him there, going through Hawthorne. Top four, remember, will go into the final at the moment. That is Proctor, O'Donovan, Grint, and then Steve Harris are on the distant fourth ahead of Colin Anson in that Ford car. One of the real amateurs, the real privateers in the British Rallycross Championship, Colin. And it's good to have that Ford on the grid. It's got some welcome variety by having that into this semi-final. Now, remember as well, not only is it the top four that go through, but the winner of the quicker of the two semi-finals takes pole position. Julian Godfrey's race winning time was 4 minutes 24.4. Assuming Kevin Proctor wins this, what's the time going to be? Is it good enough to put him onto pole position? Pole here, very important indeed, because of course you're on the inside for the first corner. If you can grab the lead there and defend for the remainder of the six laps we have in the final and the semi-finals, then you're looking very strong indeed. For now, Proctor leads O'Donovan, leads Grint. And Steve Harris is there in fourth. And James Grint, there you can see, heading down towards the hairpin. Looks as though he's going to get through to the final, but there's going to have to be some TLC offered up by the mechanics, I think, to make that car race fit once more. Over the timing line they come. Up front then, Kevin Proctor it is, getting away. Man from North Allerton leads the pack, but James Grint locks the rears as he comes into Clairvaux. He's another driver with limited British supercar experience. He's taken part in the European Championship, but he first came to prominence at Rallycross events in the RX150 buggies and was very impressive indeed in those. Driving for Andy Scott's Albertech Racing Team this year as Kevin Proctor bounces his way down towards the hairpin and Proctor absolutely on the limit. He knows what he's got to do. He's got to win, but he's got to win as quickly as he can. O'Donovan runs second. 
He's got a Fiesta coming for later in the year, but for now that Ford Focus standing him in good stead. And Steve Harris gets it wrong at the hairpin, understeers out wide. That is going to cost him time, but as long as he's in the top four, he's going to be good to go through to the final. And that is the main aim now. Holly O'Donovan has not given up in his pursuit to get onto terms with Kevin Proctor. James Grint's Peugeot is starting to get a little bit slower now. Not surprising given that it's taken so many whacks in this race. But as for Kevin Proctor, it looks as though he is going to come through to score a semi-final win. And the battle between him and Julian Godfrey shaping up for the final is going to be one to savour. Kevin Proctor then blasts his way across the loose once more. Ticking off the laps, six in the semi-finals and the finals against the four that we had early on in the day in the heats. And he turns his way now through Clairvaux, but here is a real master at work. Flings the car into the corner, keeps the power up, keeps the momentum up all the time. Blasts his way out the other side. And Proctor, who isn't just very successful here in Rallycross, he also is a regular in their winter single venue rallies, turns his way across the loose section of circuit once more. And it's going to be a semi-final victory, but it's going to be close against the clock because the lap times he's offering up, very similar to Julian Godfrey's. Understeer becomes oversteer down to the hairpin, flicks it through that tight right, back onto the power from the hard standing to the loose to the timing line. He will come. Kevin Proctor blasts his way up towards the checkered flag. He wins and he's quicker than Godfrey. Kevin Proctor's race winning time is quicker than that of Julian Godfrey. That will net him pole position crucially for the final. Second across the line there is Oli O'Donovan and it's going to be James Grint for third place. Well, you've got to say the new format for this year of the semi-finals being introduced rather than having the old system of a C final or a B or an A final uh, have certainly worked very, very well indeed. It's giving more action for the fans, more mileage for the competitors. And Colin Anson in the Ford car, sad to say, has hit problems right at the very end of the day. He won't qualify for the final because he's fifth in this race, but it looks as though he's got a problem right at the very end. The little Ford limps to the line. He will get there and he will take fifth. And fingers crossed that car can be made good for the next races at Lydon at the end of March. It's good to have the Ford in the championship. So Kevin Proctor, Ollie O'Donovan, James Grint and Steve Harris are the qualifiers. They will go through to what is going to be an all-action final here at Croft in the opening round of the MSA British Rallycross Championship. Super worker semi-final win. Um, the real battle was taking place behind you. Hopefully you weren't having to look in your mirror. No, to be fair, I, I, the man on the radio were just saying, look, keep going, keep going. They're having a scrap. Try and get as good a time as you can. Because obviously the, the best time gives us Paul in the final. So that's all we were aiming for, really. Welcome back to Croft. The final for supercars is coming up, but let's have a look back at what happened in the other categories during the day. In the Suzuki single make Swift Sport category, Bradley Durden and another former junior rallycross champion, Aidan Hills, both made the graduation for 2016. The day started not so well for Aidan, but after some well-meaning fatherly advice, things took a rather large turn for the better handing him the victory at the end of the day. In the always hugely entertaining RX150 category, former Formula Ford Festival winner and reigning champion Chrissy Palmer was back to defend his crown. Stephen Jones is back for more this year as well, having finished third in the title hunt in 2015 and determined to take things a step further this season. But it was the reigning champion who took the first spoils, for him slightly unexpectedly, with a new car and after overcoming overheating problems in the morning. In the MSA Super Nationals, rising star and daughter of Dave Bellaby, Paige, started her season as she means to go on, with the winner's trophy. In a Lotus Exige that bounced spectacularly like Tigger on the loose, when required, she defended the lead in the final in great style and beautifully made the most of the places where the car was best suited. It was a real treat to see the cars of yesteryear joining in the action in the Retro Rallycross category, with a varied and very healthy entry. Ray Morgan took his escort to victory. 
The MSA Junior Championship is a glimpse of some of the rising stars of the future. Tom Constantine took the first win of the year. The supercar final about to take place. Let's get over to David Addison. The reigning champion Julian Godfrey lines up on the middle of the front row of the grid for the supercar final. To his right on pole position is Kevin Proctor and Dan Rook is to his left, a newcomer to supercars and he's been mighty impressive all day. Ollie O'Donovan there, a former British champion, lines up on row two alongside the experienced Dave Bellaby. The third row would have had James Grint, he's missing a legacy of all the dramas in the semi-final. Steve Harris will be there but he's got a clutch problem. Dave Newsham is missing, the Power Max Racing Ford has a cylinder drama. So Simon Horton and Jack Thorne get in as reserves at the back of the grid. We are just about set to go racing. It's bitingly cold here at Croft, but a big crowd has stayed to the end of the day to watch the action with local hero Kevin Proctor on pole position and a stellar cast around him. What can Jack Thorne do from the back? What can Dan Rook do from the front of the grid on the outside? And how is the reigning champion Julian Godfrey going to fare up against them? Let's find out because the grid is formed. The drivers now will get a five second board displayed by the officials. Then they will look towards the starting lights. The supercar final of round one of the British Rallycross Championship about to get underway. Julian Godfrey creeps and stops and gets bogged down as everybody else blasts away. A great start by Proctor, but Dan Rook is away like a robber's dog as well, round the outside on the way towards Clairvaux Corner. Two leaders side by side and in the background, Godfrey is way, way off through the grab and into the barriers. Dan Rook goes wide and Kevin Proctor is going to have the race lead then as they work their way up through Hawthorne for the first time. All action at the very first corner. Kevin Proctor comes out as the leader and Dan Rook looking for a way past him. Double OD, Oli O'Donovan runs third and Dave Bellaby fourth as they come across the loose for the first time. Jack Thorne is fifth and as they turn their way now through the hairpin, Proctor runs a little bit wider. This is Rook's chance to get alongside him but he's done it. Dan Rook goes through and takes over the lead. Fantastic. End of lap one of six and Dan Rook leads the way as they come over the timing line. Tremendous stuff, he's got Kevin Proctor second, Ollie O'Donovan is third and Proctor flings the car sideways through Clairvaux now on an absolute mission to try to get back into the lead of the race. They work their way up towards the loose section of the circuit once again. But Dan Rook now, the race leader, is he going to be able to hang on in there? He's got Kevin Proctor looking for a way past him. They bounce their way across the loose section of the circuit once again and here comes Proctor. Closing, 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 he goes to the outside line which is not the ideal place to try, but he makes it work. Incredible. Kevin Proctor round the outside, takes the lead. He runs wide, he's all over the grass, but he's back on and he's back in front. Rallycross in the UK is alive and well, isn't it? Over the line they come, Proctor leads and Rook fights back on the inside going into Clairvaux. Again, Kevin Proctor completely sideways, both of them using all of the curb and all of the road there. 600 plus horsepower, two litre turbocharged engines, four wheel drive and Dan Rook absolutely on the limit, but the more experienced Kevin Proctor is back in front, and the fact that the car is so battered around the gills underlines how dramatic the first two laps of the action have been. Lap three, heading down towards the hairpin again now. Kevin Proctor leads the way and has just been able to extend the advantage a little bit. Jack Thorne there up from the back of the grid. He's had throttle cable and drive shaft issues during the day, but he's getting himself now onto the back of the opposition. Up towards the timing line comes the race leader then, Kevin Proctor. Three laps done, six lap final, and they're way wide and demolishing the floppy markers. Dan Rook really committed, going through Clairvaux. Dan Rook, the former autocross champion, came to Croft at the end of 14 to have a look at Rallycross at the clubman's meeting, the BTRDA event, and thought, yeah, I like this, and stayed on. Won last year's Super National Championship and now graduates to supercars. And he is very highly regarded. He's articulate, he's intelligent, and he's very quick indeed. In this Duran Team Citroen, he's right on the back of Kevin Proctor, but Proctor knows his way around here perhaps better than anybody. He's won here in Rally Cross, he's won here in single venue rallies. The Ford leads the way. The ex Nessa Alatia car up front, and Kevin Proctor has already stated that he's not going to do a full season in Britain this year. Can we get him to think twice and reconsider this? Perhaps if the racing is this good and this competitive, Kevin might think twice. Right with him then now, he has got Dan Rook as they work their way again onto the loose part of the circuit. This lead battle is not over yet because Rook is only about three lengths back and if he's really brave, he might be able to have a go at Proctor and try to force a mistake out of him. 
down to the hairpin again they come. Little trench developing on the inside where people have cut the corner a little bit, really trimmed the racing line through there. Proctor blasts his way across the loose section of circuit once again, though. The race leaders head off down towards Clairvaux, and as far as Dan Rook is concerned, he's running out of options, running out of laps now. Kevin Proctor looks as though he's going to be able to secure this. The race leaders are about to hit the loose for the last time, though. Here they come. Proctor leads the way. Rook second. Is he close enough? Is he going to have one last demon move heading down towards the hairpin. That's the best opportunity for him. Across the loose they come once again, heading down towards the hairpin. Last corner, last lap. Dan Rook closes right up under braking. Can he get himself up the inside? Proctor lets the tail hang out. Here comes Rook. It's going to be close, but it's going to be nose to tail. And Kevin Proctor comes through to score victory in the first round of the MSA British Rally Cross Championship. What a race. Dan Rook absolute hero of the day for taking second place and third he's going to go the way of Ollie O'Donovan and that is a tremendous way to start the season Kevin Proctor it is who takes the win ahead of Dan Rook Ollie O'Donovan third fourth and fifth you have Dave Bellaby ahead of Steve Harris with the top six rounded out by Jack Thorne yeah it was a fantastic final I got into the lead off the first corner and the lads on the on the radio were saying look you've got young Dan behind you just keep it clean keep it clean and then I made a big mistake here. Dan got past, and so then the way it just, I knew I had to try and pass him, and he just backed off a little bit on the loose, and I thought, well, here's my chance. We passed him, and then it was just try and keep it tidy, get to the end. But if that's the shape of things to come from Dan Rook, I think I'm going to retire. Um, I, I backed off a tiny little bit, and it was just enough, and, yeah, yeah. and he got back around, and I tried yeah. pushing him and everything, but I just couldn't get back past. But it was a really exciting race from being in the car as well. Kevin Proctor heads the points table after round one and the rookie Dan Rook there in second place. Reigning champion Julian Godfrey down in seventh. Round two down at Lydon Hill in Kent. We'll be back with all the action.